And I said, well, I think I was 57 at the time and I uh -huh. just had the neck surgery. I was still sore and the bike I was riding was going to be like, this. it's not no chopper where you're, you know, right. uh -huh. so I would have been down like this and I was really scared, but I said, I, I have to go. Yeah. When else am I going to be able to ride a motorcycle across Morocco with right. a bunch of women? Right. I had to go. That should have been nice. Oh my God, it was amazing. Right. And the women were all much younger than me. Uh huh. And the one older one, we palled up because <laughs> we were tired. <laughs> we weren't drinking, right. and, you know. So the young girls really partied, and um, we just they took us on all the touristy things, and mm -hmm. we just rode around. We did I think two thousand about two thousand miles. That's a good ride. <laughs> it was 15 days. It was awesome. Right. So you just rode a, what, a couple hundred miles a day? Yeah. One day we did but, 300, right. which was a long what, ride well, across I, the Sahara all Desert. All I got to say, I think I would have liked that ride better than your horseback ride <laughs> across the country. <laughs> oh, that's fun too, though. Yeah, but you do all that's that really dumb. Yeah. No, I don't know if I could do that again. If I was to ride horses again, I would just um, do trail rides where you just kind of sit and you might right. run a little bit, but then you just sit and kind of look around at stuff. Mm -hmm. That's that's about what I would do. But I think I would, if I had a horse, I would just be so sore. Cause that horse is moving. I, yeah. I have ridden horses. Knowing like your stomach, like your uh -huh. core and back. And mm -hmm. you're, you're sore in places you don't know. I was riding my horse once on the levee. And so we're like this, running, da, 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 and he just goes <laughs> like that. And I boom, slammed into the ground. like crushed my face the horse landed on me and then he just laid there so i'm laying there like this with the horse right here and he's just like who and, and i was like i kicked and, him i was like get up here I mean, and they're heavy when they land on that leg my, or something i took a picture of the bruise i got so it big. i know i know oh, it was so bad you remember that time we went bicycle riding me and you and gypsy mike yes and we were up there by the aquarium and we were cycling to be there and that chain was across and it went right across oh, the handlebar. You remember that? I forgot. I remember now. But yeah. Oh, oh my God. We'd be riding oh. in the middle of the night. Oh. You call me at 2 a.m. Let's go ride. Let's go ride. We oh. hit City Park and then mm -hmm. remember, we, I don't know if they were giant rats or Nutra or I yeah. remember seeing big things in the Right. Water <laughs> yeah. crossing don't, the street. Don't ride at night. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember all that. Oh God, that was so fun. Right. Oh, and so do you? You hear from Gypsy Mike? He he died at fifty. Oh wow. And, uh, forgot what he had. He had lymph nodes under his arms oh. and stuff. He got real sick. Oh. That's and I so went up to see him before he died. And I haven't kept kept up with his family at all. So that's been 25, 26 years. He and I are a year apart. Oh my God. How did you know him? Uh, I was working for this architect in Flint, Michigan. And his daughters knew Mike. And we'd go up to, up to, uh, we'd go up to uh, uh, Northern Mi Michigan. And that's how I met Mike, basically. That's how I met Mike. Okay. So we traveled. Uh, Marilyn and I would travel. And these people, I now I've known them. I met them when I was 21. So that's how it come. And they were just uh, people I knew from Michigan. You know? But you know, I always made time to travel, especially like with my dad and stuff like that. But traveling is worth it. I don't care what anybody says. Well, a lot of times I'm like, where did all my money go? And I'm like, well, I've been to five continents, so I have a lot of memories from a lot I know of where my money traveling. went. I gave it away. <laughs> suffering, <laughs> suffering, I mean, not actually trying to help people. You know, I think that probably is something that I really enjoy doing, but I don't think it works. <laughs> I don't think it, people are, I don't think people are appreciative. I mean, I'm sure you've done the same as me. You loan these people the money. They never pay you back. You lose friendship over it. Yeah. So now... And they have the problem, not necessarily us, you know. Right. They have the problem because they took the money. Right. But I'm willing to give them a second chance. Now what I do when I somebody, they give you that sad story, 
And because God has been so good to us, you think, well, I'm going to share this. And, and so now if, if I feel like they can't make their mortgage or whatever, I'll just give you $1,500, $2,000 when I was working. Yeah. I can't do that yeah. now. Because now they look that. out for me. That's but right. I think about how much money I've thrown away or given away. You know? Uh, help trying to help others. You know? And I'm always trying to you know, help others. Yeah, you've always been very generous. I thought so. Yeah. I haven't been selfish with my money, yeah. I don't think. You know, I just, I think this tattoo, and I'm telling you, we were blessed when we got into this. Because, uh, for somebody with the education and the brains that I've got anyway, uh, there ain't no way I should have had that good a living. And I, <laughs> I mean, I really have had a good living. You've always had a new car since I've known you. Right, right. And you've always had terrific houses and you I mean, eat good and have good right, dogs. And right. I mean, I travel, have, travel. I, have the, I have the option of what to do. And my, my taste isn't extravagant, so that helps, you know. Because so many people have told me, oh man, you could drive this Mercedes, not a Mercedes, a uh, caddy. A caddy yeah, or, a Cadillac. Or, or, or a luxury car. Yeah. But one of the reasons, like I told you today, if you're dealing with people at a certain level, you want to be at the level they are. You don't want people to think you're better than they are because you talk about a problem. Especially in Louisiana, Especially, they really, yeah. really have a chip on their shoulder. They do. If you're doing good. They do. That's true. I don't know what it is about the culture there. Right. But if somebody's doing good, you've got to get in on it. Right. And if, if you loan them some money, you know what they say? Well, you don't need it, so I'm not going to pay you back. But or, you asked me to borrow it. Or it's your fault for giving it to me. <laughs> right. It's your fault <laughs> That's for what giving they it said to me. Right. It's your fault. I'm like, damn. Well, they did say I'm wrong, so you're expecting something back. <laughs> like, at least come work a day or something, right. you know? Like, try. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, sometimes you just don't understand the mentality of the people that we deal with. And I don't think I'm no superstar brain-wise. But I, I look at the way people do it, and it just isn't making any sense. <laughs> you know? Oh. No. But we've met, I mean, some very interesting people from day one, from when I used to go over and work over there with Cindy for Bike Week. Yeah. You know? Bike Week was so fun. I thought oh, so. Oh, gosh. Someone yeah. had asked me, you know, when they did all, got rid of all that Confederate stuff, and I thought to myself, that Confederate flag's been good to me. I used to go, <laughs> I mean, back in the day, I was getting $100 for the Confederate flag. It was back in the day, back in the day, in the 80s. <laughs> you know, I'm from the North, I'm, and I believe people should have their history, you know. But people, oh man, I'm offended. It reminds me of the past. This bastard. Let me tell you, look at some of the movies they have on TV. They will make you angry when they're talking about slavery oh, yeah. and different things. I mean, which one did you see? I, I don't remember which one I saw. Well, I read a book they made into a movie. It was four, seven years a slave. Yeah. And I think in the movie, Brad Pitt was in it, maybe. I forget. I forget who the other leading actors were. But man to be taken off the street and then brought to Mississippi. Right. Like, oh my God, right. it's terrible. But some of, the, <laughs> some of the movies are just bad. Yeah. I was watching, um, like I said, I just got this TV, so I'm all excited about it. And I was watching uh, a Western where these people had incest going on <laughs> and they were whipping their women with a whip. And this was back in 1850 or something like that. That movie offended me. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, it really offended me. I just am like, how are people so stupid to let somebody do that to them? Yeah. Why don't you take over? I don't know. Right, understand. right. But the, back then, uh, back then, this her husband was like a priest, and he, mm. he was saying that, uh, you know, the Lord said this and that, and women are supposed to do this and that. And this guy was sleeping with their daughter. It was the man's daughter and her daughter, wow. and she was offended by it. So he takes her back into the barn and takes a whip. Boo, boo. Wow. Who, why would you make a movie like that? You know? But they got power, I, you know? But I tell you, that phone is so 
informative. <laughs> it's got, you know, that's why my, my memory's all ate up, is because I'm always snapshotting something, always. So, yeah, to remember it. To remember it. But the you, only way I can. <laughs> right, but I mean, it's, it, uh, YouTube was very interesting, too interesting sometimes. They've got some, uh, I think it was last week, they said, some guy said, you, uh, he put out an advertisement. You want to learn to tattoo, blah, 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 blah. I didn't really look into it. I'm saying, damn, we got so many tattoo artists as it is now. And he's promoting to learn to tattoo. And I think after you get so many views, you get paid, you know, because they give tattoo lessons on YouTube. Wow. You know, uh, how, I, how to... How to adjust your machine, how to do whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? I've asked a few kids, oh, where'd you learn to tattoo? YouTube. And right. I, I've never gone on there and looked at that kind of stuff. but It comes across whether you look for it or not sometimes. I don't go on often, maybe yeah. once a month. I'm yeah. not on it as often as I should be. But that's time consuming. I have a channel. I just post motorcycles on it. Mm -hmm. I don't even have anything tattoo related because I have friends that want to see my motorcycles, so I'll take videos and mm -hmm. put on there, but as far as for tattooing, and mm -hmm. I don't want anything to do with that on YouTube. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's silly. Well, what I'm telling you, there's a way that whatever it is you're posting, and you get enough views, they pay you, they pay you money, and now they want to get rid of TikTok. They, you know, they've been saying, right, I've heard some, about that. Sometime they've been saying, uh, TikTok is communistic. Do you think Americans care? <laughs> they don't care. They, I mean, back in the 40s, it would be, oh, God, that's unpatriotic. But now, what was the last time you did a tattoo that said death before dishonor? And you're in a military town. Yeah, we don't do that. That's right. They're getting, they're getting video game logos. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm saying. But you don't usually do... You know, when I came to New Orleans, you'd be doing the CDs and Death Before Dishonor mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I don't see people even coming close to that. Well, they moved out, huh? The Navy moved out of New Orleans. They I used to have that place on Poland, huh? I think it's been closed for yeah, years. Yeah, that is probably closed, but they got a little base across the river. Okay. And they have... The CBs are still in Gulfport and oh, Biloxi. Okay. But this tattoo shop's lined yeah. in Roosevelt. You know, back when I got in, there was no tattoo shop right. out there. Right. So. Donovan, maybe? Yeah, Tom after, Donovan. After, after a while? Yeah. I wonder if he's still around. Right? He's still around, but he, remember how good looking he used to be on his bike? Well, that ain't happening. He's oh. old. <laughs> he's got to be 70. And huh? he had cancer. Oh, he had sad. cancer too. Oh, but he's been, I tell you, I believe the older artists are having a harder time with the younger artists because they want to work with younger artists. Is what I, but we don't work the same. You don't work It's the almost same. impossible. It, it's hard to, it's hard to work because I work with kids that want to do it their way. Right. And it, it's infuriating sometimes. And they'll tell you, I, I get my feeling hurt. Right. Like right. I don't, I don't want you to do it your way. You know, I want you to well, do it the old way. way. Look, you've been doing that to almost 35 years. Something must have rubbed off on you. They've been tattooing literally 35 minutes, but they're going <laughs> to tell you what to do. I know. <laughs> so it, 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 to me, it makes it tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let me tell you, one of the guy that I was paying the 35% to, his work, I'm going to show it to you, it is different. It's not awful. It's just crazy different. Well, anyway, I called him up to tell him to take something down off the internet. Man, that sucker walked, walked up me one side down the other, and it was lettering. But the lettering was terrible. Oh, was it, it like funky or weird, <laughs> or was it just made bad? I thought it was made bad. Oh, okay. And so what did he do? He just told you he quit. Yeah. Oh no! Quit. Over a critique. A critique. Uh, and I just asked, uh, I just asked him to take that one down. I didn't tell him to take the rest down. That was on his personal. Yeah. Oh. Because what happened <laughs> oh. is people post everything. I don't think that's a good idea. Even for me, I don't want to post everything. I'm not posting. I got right. a little highlights with my portfolio in there. If there's one that's worthy, I'll put it in there. Right, but 
posted everything. Oh, I'm not doing that. Well, I just do small ones. People aren't interested in that, so. That's all I want to do. That's all I want to do. And the only reason I'm doing that is because the people, the kids that do, I just want to say, look, I'm at least twice, sometimes three times your age. You ought to be doing better than me. <laughs> they, but they don't, right. they, they don't even care. They like, don't care. you're going up the hill. I'm down the hill. Right. I'm at the I bottom know. of the hill. It's like, you should be trying harder. I I mean, I don't tattoo exactly like a beginner, but I ain't where I used to be 20 years ago. I'm not. But and it, nothing is like it was 20 years ago. So I feel the same. And I've noticed in the past few years a sharp decline yeah. in my cognitive skills. That's what I'm saying, and that I just, I think it's just a part of aging. And it is. But, I mean, my stuff, it keeps up with them dummies, you know. But they should they should want to be trying to definitely outdo me. But they should be growing, and I'm not really seeing it like I used to. Now, look, this is what this guy draws, and this is clean. I'm going to go down and find some of those but see, that's, that's, that's a style. That's a style. Yeah. And uh, for the longest time, I couldn't understand that style. You want to know the truth of the matter? Stuff like this, a frog with a face in its belly. Oh, that's me. Man, no. that's the kids love that. It's they so weird. That. It's right. Ow. It's really weird. <laughs> I mean, that's the end thing. Ow. It hurt your head, huh? <laughs> That's rubber. It's okay. <laughs> now look at this. Do you understand that? I mean, I can't even tell what it is. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. It's supposed to be like a wolf. But so that with the pipe and the girl with the brain and oh, I can't even draw and roaches like that. and pigs with wings. And then get that tattooed on. And the flamey hand with the pig face in right. it. Mm -hmm. What the hell? Wow. And I tell you, this guy would draw a sheet of flash. I mean, it's every, what a every great week. imagination. What a great imagination. Like, but it is so, I to me, never do that. so strange. <laughs> it's definitely unique. People buying it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Look, look at this. Hot stuff on a parrot body. I mean, this guy don't stop. He does that all the time. And the people love it. He's selling it. Wow. So what I see now with tattooing, and like life, anything goes. It doesn't really have to be sophisticated. Wow. But I got to tell you, I've seen this guy. That is wild. Yeah, I've seen this guy do some. His, his work has improved. It really has from when he came to me. Which is good. I'm glad to see it happen. And where is he now? Is he still in the city? He's at Wicked 13. And where is that in the city? Across the or? river. Oh, Across at the Algiers. In Algiers. Oh, okay. But you know, everybody fights me on that letter. Now you got to say one thing if you don't say nothing else. That's the best thing I ever did for any of you guys. Let's <laughs> make this letter. I made you letter. Mm -hmm. Because you just can't do your handwriting, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And my handwriting, if, if you want to, is not good. But some of this stuff, I just, you know, when I tell you I don't understand it, I don't understand it. But at least you're going to hear me say it's new. And I, I'm going to tell you, I don't understand it. It's different. It's very original. It's very original. <laughs> you have a good, good imagination. Or maybe, I don't know if there's mushrooms involved or <laughs> marijuana when, um, smoking. <laughs> when Erica came to me, she was drawing aliens, aliens. <laughs> I'm like, what? And she's the girl who does all the Mandela. She's good at it, too. She likes all that detail. Where did she go? She's an independent. Nope. She at the private studio. Is that what they call it? Uh, a private studio. <laughs> you mean the kitchen table? The kitchen table. That we used to really knock down. Now you you don't really knock that down. You know you don't. It's it's okay. It seems.
But I think the thing that I, I notice now, people will put on you in a drop of a hat. You know? Yeah. They don't give a crap. It, it's not a team like I think like we had. It's not a team. No, I, they're not. People aren't um, coming up in structured <coughs> um, uh, habits in, in the shop uh, to know who the leader is and who to listen to. Right. It's kind of like they're just taught to tattoo and then they just do whatever they want. They do it's, whatever. And the, and the client is not saying too much bad about it either. No. You know? And a lot of these people, they just do videos of themselves. Okay. Hope, I, does that really sell anything you're asking yourself? I cannot find okay. this kind of stuff. Oh. Is that? I mean, it's just—it's just, it's just oh, all. Wow. I don't understand it. Wow. But there's a market for it. There's a market. The kids love it. They do. They do. It's a weird style. And you will either see work that's like a pain or you're going to see stuff like that craziness now is this guy at a um private place he's at wicked 13. oh oh that's right you just uh, sorry he's at wicked 13. Sorry. this yeah. is the guy who's doing this and he lives out of a bus in the ninth ward he bought some mm -hmm. property up there and got himself a bus and was living out of a bus interesting that's what i said it's so just different. So much stuff is different. <laughs> and so, to be honest with you, I'm not making the money. I don't even come close to the money I used yeah, to make. That's true. But I gotta tell you, <clears throat> and I have money saved up. And I tell you, I uh, it's peace of mind. It's worth it not to go in there and have to fight with these people. You know, fight. I had a two thousand dollar water bill one year. You know, stuff like that. From what? The, the pipe is busted under my house. Oh, and, no. And they wanted me to pay this $2,000. Oh, no. So I got it, I got it resolved, finally. Oh. But that took about six months, fighting with them. It just, I, I mean, like, I understand so much about business and how stressful it is, especially doing it by yourself, you know? Yeah. I think the best thing that ever happened to you, or one of the best things, is when you got this place up in Chesapeake. Yeah. I think, and, and got a partner. Yeah, Steve's been a great partner. It takes a lot off my plate. Right. It's uh, it's a lot easier. And and it I don't have as many people there, right. you know? So and that's that's when you get easier. older, you can mm -hmm. like having somebody. I mean, they might work on your nerves, but at least somebody's there. Your brother and stuff like that, and other people, they have other family members, so they don't have the time for you that they would like to give you. And yeah. so it's great to have, and he will appreciate having you as well yeah. when you get older. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, we definitely have made each other's lives better. So right. it's a good thing. It's been good. I feel blessed and lucky. I can't believe he's put up with me all these years. <laughs> and he loves working. He loves tattooing. Right. So did he give up his shop in Philly? Well, he wasn't a co. He wasn't a co-owner or anything. But he oh. had worked with that the guy that owned it on and off for probably twenty years. He, I think he'd been there sixteen. Wow, that's a good work. Yeah, for you don't get that every day. I know. I know. And I, there might have been one other guy that's worked there that long. But I don't know. I'm not sure. But you sure. don't see that in the new shop. No. You don't see no. It. People don't stay. I'm, I'm fortunate with that, with the guys I've got that have been with us long term. That's good. It's a big, big, big Because I threaten the hell out of them. Like, right. don't you do it. Well, I don't. mean, I think, <laughs> but I think part of the problems in New Orleans was the fact that the people, would, they drank and did so much drugs. That's been a hard hit. Well, and they're like, I'm not leaving New Orleans, and there, there's only other few other places I can go. So, 
you know, I'm not, it's not like Chesapeake where people would be like, oh, I'll leave Chesapeake, who cares? Right. But New Orleans, people don't want to leave. No, they don't. They want to stay there once they live there. You know? Generally, if they don't have too severe of a drug problem. Yeah. Some of them, the drugs run them. So that's a, you know, a problem for us. I've lost a many a person because of the drugs. And yeah. drinking. I fired a guy over drinking once, but mm -hmm. he left and he went on to do really, really well. Mm -hmm. and like, see, I saw him years later, like, see, isn't that the best thing? Right. I, I, firing you was the best thing that happened it's to you. It's hard working with the drug. The druggies, they're pretty good because they need that drug and they stay straight enough to get that <laughs> money so they can get that drug. You know? <laughs> I never thought of that, but it's true. They do. I, I mean, to me, Man, I love working with the druggies because they gonna get that money in there. They they seem to be more dedicated because <laughs> they need that fix or whatever. Yeah. But I tell you, I could have died with tag OD in my bathroom. Oh man, was he in there at night? At night, somebody gave him some coke with fentanyl in. You know, it's in a powder. Oh my. Terrible. And everybody left. He was there by himself. And no, no. Uh, Faye was there and people were working. He'd go in the bathroom and, you know, he'd stay in there a good while. And if there was a lock on the door, we couldn't get in to save him. But that was such a shame for Tag. You know how much talent Tag had. He was good. And he was in some little town in Texas. And. He and Lafreme were tattooing over there, both of them druggies. And Tad gets a girlfriend that's a druggie. And oh my God, it was, it was, I mean, this girl just brought him down, period. And for such a talent, you know, he used to, he used to be a musician as well. I believe anything he touched, he could he be was good. good. Yeah. He was good. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't as bad when he worked with us in the 90s, but. He didn't get any better. You know, he did not get any better. But I often miss my old crew because, I, and I'm grateful that I had it in my career. I really am. Uh, because if I had that crew I've had since, uh, I guess right around Katrina, oh my God. Everybody left and, uh, you know, you had to make sure they had money to get out. Yeah. And, they, they, uh, just, uh, who was there then? Uh, I don't really remember. I know Jesse was there, and I remember driving back from Picayune to make sure everybody had $250 so they could get out. And I remember Booby and Damien stayed to the very end oh, shit. to make money, but they didn't give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> they stayed tattooing. And, and I didn't get any money. But I mean, I'm not gonna worry about all that. You know, you're trying to get out of there. So. That was pretty devastating, Katrina. Yeah, that was pretty devastating. How was your house up there? Uh, my house in the country was fine, okay. but but the one on Saint Claude was no, that was terrible. That was terrible. I come in, I come in town and mud all over the streets and stuff like that. You see how much trouble it is. Now see that girl spoil. Because she could have ate what we ate or whatever. But it's okay. You can be spoiled, but not with me. <laughs> <laughs> she got a boyfriend? No. Her and Demi might be in the back of that van. I don't know. Maybe so. <laughs> Let me tell you. She might be riding on that scooter. <laughs> Let me tell you. Maybe so. She <laughs> fell in love with one of her co workers. But what I didn't understand was this guy, uh, three, this guy has a girlfriend and, and, and he's got a baby by this girl. <laughs> and she's a person on the side, right? right. And when you a person on the side, you got to know you're the person on the side. You are not going to be number one. And uh, him and her got into it. And he she'd call the police on him. Oh. And so I was supposed to call and talk to her and I said to her, I don't understand what you're messing with him for in the first place. Because he's buying a house with this woman, you got a baby by this woman, this woman is a nurse, and you're a clerk. Who do you think he's gonna pick? You know how this goes, money is green. And 
she was so upset with him for about something, but I had never gotten involved with him. Not to that level. Or if I did, I would know my place. You know what I mean? Because all these, the young women I'm talking to, and that they're, they're saying, uh, I want some guy who's loyal to me, and I, I, he can't be running around cheating on you and on me and this and that. You're lucky if you find one like that. Well, you know what I found too is a lot of these women are queens. Yes. But to be a queen, you gotta have a king. Right. And the queen serves the king. Right. Like sometimes you gotta give in to your man and let him be the man. And let him be the man. You, and that's the main thing. That's where I messed up in the past. And I've yeah, well, we, both you know, of us have that problem. I've learned from my mistakes and I got a good man, I'm lucky. But uh, prior to that, I had, but you know, I had very little respect for guys I was dating seriously. Right, right. And they, the fact that you own a shop is really uh, uh, almost offensive to these people because they never had that skill. I mean, look at the man we meet, especially in a shop. Oh my God. You know? You ever notice the only guys that hit on you in the shop are really kooks? Right, right. Like no, I don't even know what, like no Brad Pitt's walking in and right. hitting on you. Hey, what's happening? You know? Right. No, it's always the weirdos. The weirdos. You know, hey, touch on me here. Oh, let me tell you. You're great. Alan, you remember Alan? <laughs> yes. Alan, Alan oh, has a God. shop up in yes. Lafayette. It's right close to Lafayette. Lafayette. And when I knew him, I had talked him into getting a bisectomy. Well, years down the road, he decides he wanted to get this untied. Oh. So he's sleeping with this stripper. She gets pregnant oh. and just abandons his kid. Oh. So now he's got this son that's 14 years old. Wow. And he is taking care of his son. But Alan, it, the reason I got rid of Alan was he didn't have no ambition. You don't want to be with people that don't have no ambition. They will drain you. So you can do bad by yourself, is how I feel about it. So, um, Alan has got this shop up there, and he is charging people $200 a week boost for his people. Oh my God. How, how is he paying rent? That's He's crazy. working. He's working. He, wow. he has to work. And I'm sure he's got two guys doing that. So you think about it. His rent might be a thousand dollars, but they pay the rent for him. But you don't get anything else. Right. There's a lot of other expenses. Jeez. God, just to run a shop. You're right. Because during back in the day, we were advertising and, and everything else, making flyers, going out, passing out flyers, sticking up stickers on the back of signs. You you used to give me off uh, like during Jazz Fest. It'd be kind of slow on certain days. And I'd say, can I go to Jazz Fest? And you'd say, take these flyers, you can go. Right, right, and I right. would, and I'd have a good time. Mm -hmm. I'd pass them along. Remember, I used to make you guys go to uh, Mardi Gras. We didn't even work. Oh, we were even open on Fat Tuesday. Yeah. Because we were all going to Mardi Gras. You know? Yeah. It's kind of a deal. But, uh, and then all of us, well, I was the first one to get greedy working on Sunday. Back in the day, you didn't work on no Sunday. You took the day off, and I think that that is really good for you. It gives your mind a rest for a minute. Yeah. But we've all got no oh, seven days a week, and you know some of the people are working till two in the morning. I ain't, yeah, it's not even safe to do two in the morning. I think when I first came to you, me and you and Fred and Henry all worked twelve-hour days. Uh huh. At least six. Everybody got a day off. Right. But that was a lot. When we were young. You were young. You know, Remember how young was, Fred and them were? Yeah. yeah. Fred and them were just turning 20, I believe. They weren't that old, Jack. They were still at teens. Right. They were teens. Fred was young. Yeah. He was still in high school. Right, right. I think he was. <laughs> God. That, that, let me tell you, I don't know. Fred is doing social work now. Wow. And uh, but he does his, some of his art, but he's really burnt out on the tattooing because the people, you know, he's, he's working on black people. They, they're bickering about the price and this, that, and the other. And I'm sure that really gets to you. It's, it's got to be hard. It's got to be hard. 
So would you like to take your nap and not listen to me talk and talk and talk oh, and talk? It's up to you. Anyway, well, I'm just going to sit and rest and watch the TV. I'm going to call Steve and mm -hmm. that's it. Good one. Oh, I got to call that guy who wants to sit in with a picture of me on his butt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. He's an old guy, but he's not my age. Get him to send a picture. I want to see it. Yeah, I am. I am proud. He's about six 